explains President Saleh's survival. For that, we turn to Barbara Bodine, who served as U.S. Ambassador to Yemen from 1997 until 2001, and Bernard Haeckel, a professor of Near Eastern Studies at Princeton University. And Professor Haeckel, after all these on-again, off-again deals, these forces besieging him, he is still there. Why and how does he do it? I mean, he has always ruled in this uh, chaotic way, uh, dividing up uh, different forces in Yemen, playing off outside uh, powers against each other, and also threatening a uh, collapse of Yemen uh, and, and, and promising that he's the only person who can keep it together, and thereby getting money from either the Saudis or the Americans in order to stay in power. He's always ruled in this way. And I uh, and he wants to stay in power clearly, and thinks that mm. he can either outwit or out, uh, uh, you know, li live out the patience of most of his opponents. Do you see him that way, Ambassador Bodin? I mean, do you think he really never did intend to live up to any of these deals? I'm beginning to to think that he probably did not intend to live up to them. Um, I think particularly when we got to the GCC brokered agreement, that one had the largest backing. Um, including us and all of the GCC members, and is the one that he most clearly said he would sign. Um, he has outwitted uh, all of his opponents over the last 30 years, um, but I think now he is starting to make some serious tactical mistakes, and uh, unfortunately, we're seeing the, uh, the results of that. Briefly, what do you mean tactical mistakes? Give me one. Well, um, constantly agreeing and then reneging. Mm -hmm. Uh, particularly this GCC one, because he lost a lot of backing. There were the 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 basic uh, sense mm -hmm. of most outside countries, outside powers, was to have a negotiated uh, settlement um, between the opposition and to have some kind of reasonable transition, as opposed to Mubarak or Ben Ali just simply right. stepping down. So, so, Professor, back to you. So, let's talk about the outside powers. You had all the Gulf neighbors, ostensibly, including the Saudis, wanting him gone. Why can't they pull it off? Isn't he dependent, for instance, on the Saudis financially? He has received financial support from the Saudis, and they, they I think, are, have now given up on him. Oh. The problem with uh, the, the Saudis in particular is that the candidate that they would like to replace him with is a relative of his, a man called Ali Mohsen, who's really uh, the continuation of the same system and mm -hmm. would not be a acceptable to most Yemenis. Yeah, I see. And, and, uh, and how about the opposition, Professor, staying with you for another minute? Just, just the opposition itself. I mean, you have all these different factions in the opposition. Is there any cohesion? Mm -hmm. that, Is there any right. ability to actually yeah. pull something off here? I mean, the opposition is quite divided, and the problem is also that the opposition is not representative of uh, the populist movement that has overtaken this country. Mm -hmm. These large young people, who, large numbers of young people who are so far peacefully demonstrating don't have a leadership and are not organized uh, around the older opposition mm -hmm. members. So you do have a country that is very, very fragmented. Right. And then Ambassador Bodine, he's always played, as, as I think the professor mentioned earlier, the sort of, it's me or al-Qaeda, or it's me or chaos card. Mm -hmm. Is that still working for him with either his own people or with, uh, say, the U.S.? Um, I don't think it's working any longer. It's, it's been more that it's, it's either me or chaos. Um, and as Professor Haeckel pointed out, you know, there isn't a, an obvious or agreed successor. But what we're seeing is that what we've got now is him and chaos, not him or chaos. So I think that card is, is, is no longer really a strong card. And, and Professor, this, uh, this sort of takeover of Zanzibar, the city on the southern coast, the government seemed to hint that this was al-Qaeda and the Arabian Peninsula connected or something, it, it, yet there seems a lot of skepticism about that. Mm. Yeah, there, there is. And, and uh, you know, as, as Ambassador Bodin has just mentioned, I think he's overplayed his hand. And this may be just another attempt, again, to use the um, al-Qaeda card. And it's not clear that, in fact, it is al-Qaeda that has taken over yeah. this city, if at all. But mm -hmm. who else would it be? Oh, it could be local tribesmen, a southern, southern, uh, there's a southern secessionist movement, and there's also a man who is the uh, yeah. descendant of the old leader of, of Zinjibar, a man called Tariq al-Fadli, who is one of the big leaders in that town and has, mm. has his own men. 
So back right. to you, Ambassador. What? Yeah. How does this? How is this likely to play out? Um, I don't think anyone has the the real answer on that. It's going to have to be negotiated. Um, if you run through the various options, um, in that sense, the statement that it is going to have to be a Yemeni solution and somehow negotiated, I would think that uh, if not the GCC, one of the GCC members, probably not Saudi, will have to come in and broker some kind of a deal, um, or this is just going to continue to spin out of control, and uh, no one will win, absolutely no one. But, Professor, that scenario depends on Saleh actually wanting to leave. I mean, do you see anything that would break either his will or his ability mm. to hang on? I, I, I think that, uh, you know, the big question is how much money does he have at his disposal? Because he, he is not able to wage a war. Uh, against all Yemenis, if he's no. if he can't buy off and op uh, his so his own supporters, this has always been a rule of thumb in Yemen that you know you need to spend money on the tribes in order to mobilize them to your side. And I'm not sure how much money he has or how much money he's willing to actually spend uh, yeah. to to mobilize support against uh, this formidable opposition that is now against him. All right, Professor Haeckel and Ambassador Bodine, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.